So then guys, we've just had the Apple Let Loose May events for the brand new iPad Pro and the iPad Air as well. And we got some amazing upgrades for the brand new iPad Pro, what I want to talk to you about today by doing a review of specs of the iPad Pro 13 inch M4 versus the 14 inch or 14.2 inch M3 MacBook Pro. We're going to compare the specs of both these models and see just on the face of it, by looking at the specs, which one is right for you. So let's get started then with this comparison. So to start with, as you can see here, we have the iPad Pro 13 inch as the reference model here with an M4 chip inside of it against the MacBook Pro 14 inch with the M3 chip inside of that. So with that, let's begin. So first of all, for the display type, we have two different display types now. We have the brand new Tandem OLED inside the iPad Pro. This is both on the 11 inch and also the 13 inch model and this is also a pro motion display too and then on the macbook pro 14 inch we have a mini led pro motion display inside of that so that's oled for the first time on any ipad we've ever had this but the macbook pro like we can see it right here still has a mini led display inside of it but moving on we have the screen size next now apple have increased the ipad pro by 0.1 of an inch up to 13 inches now whereas the macbook pro 14 inch has a 14.2 inch display so we're talking just over an inch bigger here if you got yourself a macbook pro 14 inch and just in case you want to know what that meant on screen resolution, the iPad Pro 13 inch has a 2,752 by 2,064 resolution, whereas the 14.2 inch has a 3,024 by 1,964 resolution on that MacBook Pro. And just in case you want to know what that means for pixels per inch, it's 264 pixels per inch versus 254 pixels per inch on the MacBook Pro. Now, one thing I would say with those pixels per inch is don't take them too seriously that the iPad Pro, for example, has more inside of it. At the end of the day, you do hold the iPad Pro more closer to your face compared to, say, the likes of a MacBook Pro. You wouldn't put that as close to your face. Even if you use a Magic Keyboard too, this was probably going to be a bit more closer to you. So really, for your actual eyes and actually looking at the screen, at the amount of pixels that you're getting, well, there's not much in it between them. But however, that OLED display, though, on the iPad Pro is going to come up far more crisper as we will see in a minute but as both of these models are both pro models they both feature pro motion what allows them to go up to 120 hertz refresh rate and go all the way down to one hertz too what is absolutely amazing on both these models they're neck and neck for that but for brightness and true tone what we've got here is something amazing with the oled display we actually have a 1000 nits sdr display normally we only get 500 or 600 nits like what we're seeing here with the macbook pro 14 inch but this is really really high and even with hdr apple also claimed with the ipad pro that you will get far better brighter colors inside of your screen so this does mean if you do take your ipad pro out and about it means then you're going to get an even better display and also bright lights hitting down on your ipad pro it means that you'll be able to see the screen far more clearer compared to say the macbook pro but don't get me wrong the macbook pro is still really good and with an xdr inside of it it also still has one 1000 nits inside of that too. But moving on to the processor and CPU, and this is the big one that everybody wants to know about. Now, what I'm gonna say is first of all, the Apple M4, this is the base model we're comparing here with 256 gigabytes of storage inside of it. And Apple have said the 256 model and the 512 gigabyte model have the standard bin M4 chip. So that means you get a nine core CPU, 10 core GPU, and the 16 core neural engine as well. Whereas the MacBook Pro 
Pro 14 inch M3 comes with an 8 core CPU, 10 core GPU and a 16 core neural. But obviously the iPad Pro 13 inch, how that's actually working is with the performance cores and efficiency cores, there are far more than now. And this is going to be absolutely amazing to see here. You're going to see a big performance leap here on the iPad Pro compared to say the M1 iPad Pro what came out. So yeah, it's going to be a lot of difference between that. But compared to the M3 MacBook Pro, there's only going to be a slight little bit more of increase compared to the M3 model. So really, there isn't going to be too much in it. That's what I would say at this stage. But a leap in performance is a leap in performance. But do remember the M4 is an advancement of the M3. So it's a little bit more speedier than what we have with the M3. But we're talking like about 20% increase in sort of speed here. Not too much. And that's going to be probably the, the maximum we're going to have here. But we're going to have to check out benchmarks officially to make sure on that. So we'll just say that at this stage. But the other thing though, what the M3 MacBook Pro has, what the iPad does not, and that is it has a fan inside of it where this is completely a fanless design. So Apple even said that the new iPad Pro is even thinner this time round, but yeah, it still does not have a fan inside of it, but Apple have said they've worked on the thermals on the M4 on this chip here. Well, like I said, you do get that single fan inside the M3 model of the 14 inch MacBook Pro. But then moving on to RAM, now this is where it gets quite interesting. Apple have decided again to stick with eight gigabytes of RAM as the base minimum inside of it. Now, what I would say with that is that if you get the 256 gigabyte model, the 512 gigabyte model, you get eight gigabytes of RAM. But if you select the one terabyte or the two terabyte option, you get 16 gigabytes of RAM automatically. You cannot choose what RAM you want inside the iPad Pro unless you choose is the right amount of storage. Remember that 256 and 512 gigabytes to get eight gigs. And then basically the terabyte options, the one terabyte and the two terabyte option gives you the 16 gigabytes of RAM inside of it. Whereas the MacBook Pro 14 inch with the M3, it comes with eight gigabytes as the standard base amount, but you can choose to have 16 or 24 gigabytes of RAM inside of your model. What I would say there though, is I am a little bit disappointed again, that eight gigabytes is the bare minimum. It should be 10 gigabytes or, you know, 12 gigabytes here as the base amount. Maybe with the M4 MacBook Pro, when that comes out, maybe this will be the case, but it does look like for the iPad Pros, at least it's gonna be eight gigabytes as the standard amount of RAM you get inside the machine on a base model. And talk about storage amounts next of all, as we just discussed very briefly there, with the iPad Pro, you do get a 256 gigabytes, 512 gigabytes, one terabyte and two terabytes. And then with the MacBook Pro 14 inch mode, and then with the MacBook Pro 14 inch, it's exactly the same configuration, except for it starts at 512 gigabytes, up to one terabyte and a two terabyte option just on the M3 chip inside of it. Next of all, though, is ports. And it looks like ports haven't really changed that much on the iPad Pro. So let's have a look here. So that's right, we are still getting a one time USB C Thunderbolt 4 port here inside the iPad Pro 13 inch model. No differences there, no speed increases, still the Thunderbolt up to 40 gigabytes or gigabits um, speed there, what you're gonna get. Whereas the MacBook Pro 14 inch, you get two of those ports on side of it, and that's all on one side, but you also get the SD card or the SDCX slot inside of it, and you also get HDMI 2.1. So you do actually get a lot of extra ports here on the MacBook Pro, so that is definitely a big favor there for this. But then one of the big advantages, and obviously this is what the iPad is all about, it's also you can touch it and it also supports Apple Pencil. And this is that brand new Apple Pencil Pro, which just come out, is fully supported on the brand new iPad Pro 13 inch. Whereas the MacBook Pro, you have no touch screen or anything like that. You just have to use your actual touchpad at the bottom and also your keyboard, but you might prefer that as an option. But then moving on to the operating system next of all, we do have iPad 
iPad OS 17 out or 17.5 now for the iPad Pro. And then with Mac OS, we have Mac OS 13 Sonoma on the MacBook Pro 14 inch. But as we know from about a month from now, on June 10th, we have WWDC 2024, where we will see the next version of iPad OS 18. And also we have the brand new Mac OS coming out with lots of new features. And I think Apple here are gonna push out a lot of inbuilt AI features into their systems here. So it's gonna be quite exciting to see what iPad OS and Mac OS is going to bring us. But next Next of all, let's talk about battery life because obviously the new iPad Pro compared to this model I've got right here is actually slimmer. So let's see if we've got any differences there. Well, funny enough, Apple are actually claiming that you still get the same up to 10 hours of battery life on the iPad Pro 13 inch. And I think they've done this because of the new OLED display, making it thinner as well. It means the battery is probably slightly smaller, I believe, but because of the OLED is more efficient, but obviously you do have the M4 chip inside of it. So there's lots of bits and pieces going on. Personally, in my opinion, if Apple had kept the same size, size thickness as the iPad Pro uh, M1 and the M2, maybe the battery life probably could have been a little bit more but they kept it to the standard 10 hours whereas the macbook pro 14 inch m3 absolutely soars here and actually has a 22 hour battery life inside of it, it was absolutely amazing but then for charging, that means then that the M4 13 inch iPad Pro charges up to 35 watts. Now, obviously you can charge in like a 60 watt or 100 watt charge or whatever you want, but can only charge at 35 watts. Whereas the MacBook Pro 14 inch can actually charge up 67 watts inside of it. You don't get that charge inside the box unless you decide to go and get yourself one, but it does mean that the MacBook Pro probably would charge faster, but there again, it does have a bigger battery to fill up so you never know it could be neck and neck here and filling up the batteries but maybe that's a test for one day to do but with the actual charging, the MacBook Pro, in my opinion, actually wins here because you get the MagSafe charger built onto it, what allows it to just pop off if someone knocks it. And also it allows you to still use all those other ports. Whereas like an iPad Pro, you've only got the one port here. And that means then, that, you know, if you're using it to charge up your iPad, you can't use any other ports unless you like, plug in a hub or something like this, or let's like, say you had the Magic Keyboard, for example. So yeah, there is a bit of a disadvantage there, in my opinion. But one thing that I would say the iPad Pro absolutely scores here, and that is weight. The weight is now 579 grams compared to 1.55 kilograms. That means we're talking the new weight of the new iPad Pro 13 inch is one third of the weight of this MacBook Pro that we have here. And that is absolutely amazing. It's so lightweight. But if we move on to speakers though, we do have a difference here. The iPad Pro has four times speakers, but the MacBook Pro 14 inch M3 has six times speakers and also has woofers as well inside of that. So we do get a bit more superior sound inside the MacBook Pro. Moving on though to Wi-Fi and connectivity here, both of these models have Wi-Fi 6E, but we do not have Wi-Fi 7 in them. Maybe the new iPhones at the end of this year, maybe the introduction to Wi-Fi 7, who knows? But all we know is now that the iPad Pro does not have Wi-Fi 7, it has Wi-Fi 6E. But then for cellular options though, you do have the option of getting a cellular one for the iPad Pro, so you can stick in a 5G SIM or eSIM into that. Whereas the MacBook Pro, obviously you cannot have an eSIM or plug in anything, but you do always have the option to just use your iPhone or a phone as a hotspot if you had it in your pocket. So you could just do that. You don't actually have to have a cellular option of the actual MacBook Pro. It doesn't really need it. And the same with the actual iPad too. You can also use that as a cellular or connect you know, via a hotspot to your phone and just use your data from that if you want to. But moving on to the actual webcam, now the iPad Pro 13 inch does have that center stage camera and it's now horizontal at last. It's no more on the vertical side, so that's really great news to see. And then the same here with the MacBook Pro 14 inch, it does also have its horizontal camera, obviously, but it is inside that notch if you love it or you hate it. But both of them are 1080p, 12 megapixel cameras in both of these devices. 
And that pretty much sums up all the specs. But you'll probably want to know what is the price difference here and what we're getting. Well, let's take a look. The standard base model of the iPad Pro 13 inch with 256 gigabytes of storage starts at 1,299 US dollars, whereas the MacBook Pro 14 inch with the M3 with 512 gigabytes of storage starts at 1,599 US dollars. So on the face of it, the new iPad Pro does seem cheaper, but really, to be honest, if you want to equip it out with a, say, a magic keyboard, or or let's say you also want an Apple Pencil, and let's say we also match it to the same 512 gigabytes of storage, what we have here, like with the MacBook Pro, you're gonna be probably more targeting towards sort of a, about a 2,000 or 1,999 or $1,900 sort of price mark instead. It is gonna be very, very costly to do it that way. Now, obviously you do have 256 gigabytes of storage as the starting amount inside the iPad, and that's because the actual operating system system is a bit more lightweight compared to macOS. macOS uses more storage compared to say the likes of say iPad OS. But really in the grand scheme of things, you know, I'd say in my opinion, and this is just me, I would say that obviously the MacBook Pro probably gives you better value. The other thing you've got to remember is that later on this year, we will probably get the M4 chip inside this MacBook right here. And with that, it'll probably stay at the same price as 1,599 US dollars, as you can see right here. And with that then, there's gonna be a big argument, you know, really the main difference is, is that do you just need the touchscreen and that OLED display, or do you prefer the mini LED display? Having a keyboard, a heavier device, it's gonna be up to you here on what you want. But moving on, the last thing I wanna talk about is the colors. And as you can see here, they are very similar. We have a silver option for both, but we have the brand new Space Black on the iPad Pro, but the MacBook Pro 14 inch with just the M3, not the M3 Pro or M3 Max, comes with the Space Silver instead of it. And with that, guys, will you be buying yourself a new iPad Pro or sticking with a MacBook Pro? Like I said, for me personally, in the way how I use my work, I would be sticking with a MacBook Pro. But don't get me wrong, I am going to test out the brand new iPad Pro when it comes out. And especially you've got those updates like with Final Cut Pro, that is one of the big apps that I use. I want to see what the enhancements are there. And one of the enhancements I'm really hoping that Apple bring with the new Final Cut Pro, we'll have to test this out. And that is, can you actually move files back and forth between a MacBook and iPad? You can do it one direction at the moment. So I'm hoping you can do it both directions. So fingers crossed for that. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. What do you think of the brand new iPad Pro? Are you going to be getting yourself one? Let me know in the comments below. And with that as well, guys, it's time to wrap up this video. So if you have enjoyed watching it, please do press the like button. Also, you want to hear the latest Apple news, reviews, and comparisons like we've done today. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell too. Until next time, guys, I'll see you really soon. Take care. Bye-bye.